Eileen Niren was an SOE operative during World War II. Eileen was born in London in 1921. Her mother, Marie, was Spanish, and her father, John, was English. She was the youngest of four children. Two of her siblings would actually also become SOE operatives. In 1923, when Eileen was two years old, the family moved from London to France. Niren grew up in France and became fluent in both French and English. In 1940, when Eileen was 19 years old, Germany invaded France and many fled the country. Eileen and her sister Jacqueline made their way to London traveling through Barcelona, Madrid, Lisbon, Gibraltar, and Glasgow, while the rest of the family remained in France. She was soon recruited by the SOE due to her linguistic skills. The Special Operations Executive, SOE, was a secret British military World War II organization formed in 1940. Its purpose was to conduct espionage, sabotage, and reconnaissance in occupied Europe against the Axis powers, and to aid local resistance movements. Few people were aware of the SOE's existence. It was also known as Churchill's Secret Army, or the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Its various branches, and sometimes the organization as a whole, were concealed for security purposes behind names such as the Joint Tactical Board, or the Inter-Service Research Bureau, or fictitious branches of the Air Ministry, Admiralty, or War Office. Eileen worked as a home-based signals operator, receiving secret messages from agents in the field, usually written with invisible ink on the back of typewritten letters, and transmitting them across the channel. She was flown by a Westland Lysander aircraft to a field near Le Lagnis Saint Valentin in Indre, France, in the late hours of March 2, 1944, with Jean Savvy to work as a wireless operator for the Wizard Network as part of Operation Mitchell. Her cover story was that she was Mademoiselle Dutorte, also using aliases Jacqueline Duterte and Alice Wood. Using the code name Rosie, she was given the mission of helping Savvy set up a network in Paris called Wizard. Its aim, unlike the networks dedicated to sabotage, was to organize sources of finance for the resistance. Nirn's role was to maintain a wireless link to London, and in the course of the next five months, she transmitted 105 messages. It has always been acknowledged that the work of the wireless operators was the most dangerous job in SOE. This was because the Germans had technical capability to detect their signals and identify their location. Wireless operators were also aware that they were in possession of important intelligence, and if arrested, they expected to be tortured by the Gestapo, and if they refused to talk, they would likely be shot. Consequently, Survival meant being one step ahead of the German wireless detection teams by never transmitting from the same location and passing their messages as quickly as possible before moving to another safe house some distance from where they had been transmitting. During this dangerous game of cat and mouse, where the Germans had all the advantages, Eileen Naren sent over 100 messages to London. According to Foote, SOE's official historian, she had transmitted a good deal of economic and military intelligence besides arranging for weapons, sabotage stores, and other agents to be dropped by parachute. On the 25th of July, 1944, Eileen's transmitter was detected. During this time, Jean Savvy had returned to London with important information about German V-1 flying bombs, leaving Naren on her own. She had gone to her safe house to transmit an urgent message against her chief's orders. As she was finishing, she heard banging from the house next door. She packed up and hid her equipment and destroyed her messages. When she heard banging on her door, she opened it and was confronted by a man pointing a pistol at her face. The house was searched, and her radio gear and gun were discovered. She was arrested, handcuffed, and driven to Paris. Once in Paris, she was interrogated by the Gestapo. She was given the full revolting treatment of the torture chamber, but survived in silence. She reportedly managed to convince her captors, under torture, that she had been sending messages for a businessman, unaware that he was British. On August 15, 1944, she was sent to Ravensbrück concentration camp. 
Once there, she refused to do prison work. Her head was shaved, and she was told she would be shot if she continued to refuse. She was then transferred to a forced labor camp in Silesia. During this time, she was also tortured. On April 13, 1945, she escaped with two French girls from a work gang. They were able to hide in the forest, later traveling through Markleberg. In Markleberg, they were captured and arrested by the SS, but they were able to fool their captives into releasing them by calmly informing the soldiers they were French volunteers working in a factory. They were allowed to continue their journey. Once they escaped, they were reportedly hidden by a priest in Leipzig until the arrival of United States troops. Eileen survived grueling torture and imprisonment without revealing her government's secrets. She was resourceful and managed to escape capture not one but two times. After World War II, she was awarded the Croix de Guerre by the French government, and she was appointed as member of the Order of the British Empire, MBE, by King George VI for services in France during the enemy occupation. Eileen lived to be 89 years old. She passed away in 2010. She maintained her government secrets throughout her life, hiding her involvement in the war. It was only upon her death, when her flat was being searched by council members to try to establish her next of kin, that medals and other papers related to her war service were found.